Okay, we are here currently looking at some slides from the various uh, methods we use in the triphasic training exercise manual, and this one's based upon the ankle rocker. Now, what is the ankle rocker? The ankle rocker is essentially how the foot functions uh, during the high speed running or walking or um, just sports in general. Um, we found some high speed analysis of different uh, pictures that have been taken by Chris Corfus and we've applied it to our high school triphasic, uh, the triphasic training football speed and strength e-manual and we've had um, some various teams in the NFL, um, college and high school use it. Uh, the methods to fix the ankle rockers with their athletes which we'll show you here in the future very simple methods but we have been able to uh, get some great results uh, at all levels uh, uh, some results are uh, ver various coaches at different high schools um, one coach had 20 kids with 30 inch verticals and another coach has had 30 kids with 30 inch verticals and I know um, the one coach has hands on the hips when they do that. So let me cover a quick a few samples of the ankle rocker. And essentially, as the hip is in the posterior part, uh, when the foot lands um, of the ankle rocker, this is closer to walking, actually. You can see how everything travels forward. You have to keep that in mind. Um, maybe we'll, we'll do this. Um, ultimately, you can see how the ankle travels through. Um, in the walking phase and there's the knee there's a few different ankle rockers here um, in running it's not really doesn't really happen uh, essentially what you have is uh, an ankle rocker if you got a heel striker you have somebody that runs like an elephant um, and I don't think you want that because why elephants land on their heels they don't have an ankle rocker anyway the common sheet patterns you'll see with a bad ankle rocker, foots turn in, foots turn out, and the list goes on and on here. But I'll actually show you pictures of it, again, extracted from Chris. And what, what has transpired here in these flaws in running is because of foot function. The ankle rocker is not functional. And when we fix this, all these patterns can be uh, um, improved with the athlete. And obviously, as you can see, there will be some big gains in performance. The first one we have here is turn, uh, uh, the foot turns in. And with the foot turning in, basically what happens is that you are able to see that the, the forces come on the outside of the foot as they run down the track or in this case the road. Basically in this one you'll see the foot, you probably see some hip sag here, but ultimately you can see the foot um, turns out two, so forces are, this athlete runs on the edge of a foot, possible bone structural issues there from too much running. This athlete's actually bouncy, and when I say bouncy, they, they spring up and down too much. Why? Because the ankle does not function very well. And when I say that, it, there's just a lack of mobility, and what will transpire is they have to get over their ankle lack of ankle mobility so they spring upwards when they run this one you can see that the toe spins out um, through the big toe so the forces are actually going more lateral than if the heel was directly behind the athlete and pushing off and um, this one uh, the athlete is the side view knee should be under the hip um, at the toe off so this actually has an anterior tilt um, may also be structural anterior tilt um, facilitating this, but then the ankle has to compensate. And then this one, we have a wide swinging of the hips so that the foot, the body can go basically around the foot contact. Because all this is displaced, all these problems are created when the foot strikes the ground. These problems aren't there. Now, the body may actually start to change its movement patterns because it knows to get extension, it's going to have to change its pattern. The body's smarter than, than we are, actually. Um, here's an example of a very stiff ankle rocker. That being said, if you took a line, you drew it straight up, you can see that there's not much more shin angle um, after you would draw a straight line. Now, that being said, if this is a, a world-class athlete, the, you may have this angle, but the heels may just barely be off the ground. 
Okay, and when I say world class, I mean an elite level sprinter or something of those of that nature. But this athlete is a lineman, and essentially what you'll have is this athlete would play higher than he he would normally because if he had great ankle rocker and could get his shins lower, when he goes to drive block somebody, you're essentially being able to get lower and better position, and sports is all about positioning. Now, this is a, a world-class sprinter who is essentially, you can see, doesn't have any ankle issues and is getting close to toe off and the knee will be underneath the hip at that point. But this is a more ideal. And you'll notice on some of these kids previously, sorry to go back, but the kids with a lot of arm swing, um, you'll notice they'll have a lot of hamstring problems too because these are all compensation patterns. And are the compensation patterns causing the hamstring uh, problem more possibly, or is it the other way around? But the point becomes, as you can see, this particular athlete has very high level uh, performance in regards to his ankle rocker. So, and this actual athlete, again, is moving around the hip shifted out. So one major point here that I want to make is that when this athlete runs, if the hips, if the foot should be directly under the hip there's a sign also that this is a bad ankle rocker but also that the hips can be weak and in the exercise manual that we have here um, at one point we'll address that in the exercise manual uh, that we are making this video for now understand the next point is that with this particular athlete this athlete i believe was ended up getting drafted he was a, a lineman in the big 10 and what happens is, um, let me go back, I'm sorry. What will take place is you can see these, these uh, vertical forces that this athlete has is uh, a very effective um, straight up and down in, in that sense. So when I say that, um, notice that he can bend his ankles a little bit more. And actually, as he accelerates, his ankle was even farther more bent. But you can see the hip and the knee, the hip and the knee on the opposite leg are pushing down. So force, the forces are vertical here, straight up and down. The foot helps you transpire in your body position because center of mass will move this way. Foot still connect the ground and that will push you horizontally. You can see how this world-class sprinter during between acceleration and... Um, top end speed he is still pushing vertical now he gets into top end speed he will also push vertical down here so if you took this athlete and took them up they would essentially not be squatting with their butt back but they would be squatting straight up and down and then the foot is such a, a big component um essentially what will take place is that the the foot will transfer all the forces from the hip and the knee that are being um, driven into the ground now you have to realize that these particular uh, uh, athletes in all the positions they get in, look here, this athlete is stopping with this leg in a more conventional position of the squat, but with the sport back squat, you can see that the, the real driver here is essentially that this leg is pushing straight down, his foot is underneath his hip. If this foot's forward, if this foot's back, you will take time and put it on his pro agility or changing directions. Okay? And that being said, so you want, here's a coaching point, foot underneath the hip. Optimally bend your knee and ankle. Now, you'll notice that this athlete might be coming out or finishing going in. It looks like he's possibly coming out. Now, you rarely ever see your athlete push off in this angle. And this is actually pretty good form, however, but this foot's doing all the pushing. And then by the time the center of mass travels, this leg will be higher and start to push vertically also with the um, hip will push straight up and down. You can see the same thing here. What will transpire is that the foot this leg's using the brake but he should place his foot 
directly underneath his hip. And what transpires here with this ankle rocker is that they can stop, absorb more force, and reapply force in better positions with a good ankle rocker and a positive shin angle. This athlete here, notice again, he's not having his butt back like a conventional squat. He is going straight up and down. Forces are straight up and down. He's pushing off this leg straight up. He is bent over, but that's just because he has to touch the line. Athletes with good ankle rockers will go straight up and down, play in better positions. They will change directions better they will also play lower in sports now everyone talks about power in sports and it's great but i want to ask you this this is a power lifter who's got his butt back an extremely strong person but who's rated in a better position to generate power this athlete would have to bring his the the weight and the center of mass underneath him to produce maximal force at the top this this athlete is in a better position straight up and down ready to push on the ground extremely hard and extremely fast this athlete will generate power more quicker now I'm not comparing the two athletes I'm just telling you the position is more optimal on the right side for this athlete to produce power quicker now what you'll see with this slide is that in hockey the same thing transpires notice the athlete is in the is uh, in a position to push down towards the skate which is a vertical position he may be compared to his hips he may be externally rotated but just remember it's still a vertical force coming down and then the foot and the angle of the leg will transfer them horizontally down the ice same thing with this athlete notice straight up and down position so this is why we promote the a sport back squat and we'll get into that what we found and people would say well this ankle rocker stuff's not important but what transpires is that if you have a great ankle rocker and can get a positive shin angle and still hold the positions and be very powerful, you will skate lower. And all skating coaches want that. Because why? You can generate more power over a longer period of time. Now here's some classic athletes and uh, maybe there's a reason they're good. One of them is, notice this athlete here, Walter Payton, he has a very positive shin angle compared to his ankle his knee and he hasn't even reached it yet his center of mass will come over here and this angle will even be greater same things transpiring here if their ankle rocker wasn't functioning correctly and this foot collapsed what transpires is that they will definitely not produce the power and be able to move this way look at this Barry Sanders if you drew a straight line, knee goes in front of the toe so much, it's pretty amazing. Michael Jordan, if the inside of his ankle rocker collapsed, he would actually have to play higher and couldn't change directions as well. These are all examples in sports of some pretty good athletes. Again, Usain Bolt, hips, knee, vertical, okay, vertical forces from the from the hips and knee vertical forces on the opposite leg from the hips and knee this leg is in maybe the traditional squat position but what transpires is center of mass travels here foot strikes the ground the, the shin angle essentially will be almost parallel to the ground on the second on the second step here uh, not not almost but it'll be close so um, but the point is is that these forces are always vertical from the hip and knee and this is why we use this very our various squat methods now the ankle rocker exercises to produce such good quality ankle and joint stiffness and function are essentially your coaching points are essentially um, on the down phase if you let's say you're doing a squat always lift your t your toes up try to maintaining your arch you you will push your knee in front of your toe as much as you can while maintaining your arch and keeping your, your your toes up and putting the heel on the ground, keeping the heel on the ground, okay? During the up phase, we emphasize short foot. We essentially squeeze the toe, which then will cause your glute to fire at that particular time. Now, let me see if I can bring these up with a YouTube video. Oh, that worked. not sure we need the noise but you can see let me try that again so you can see this athlete 
just with the ankle wipers, he is actually just pulling his foot and toes up and he's rotating internally, externally rotating his foot as much as he possibly can. Now the key here is to move your foot as much as you can while keeping your knee still. This particular athlete for single leg squats. Um, hold on. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button. I'm sorry. So here the athlete will go down, try to force keep his toe up, keep the heel, the the shin from collapsing, and push the knee in far in front of the toe while keeping the heel on the ground. You're you're pushing the knee forward, heel on the ground, and keeping your arch up. There it is. So there we go. You can, these are ankle shuffles. You can see the athlete moving his ankles, strengthening them with his toes, lifted up, planting them. I would also coach the athlete to squat a little bit more and push the knees in front of the toes as far as we can. These are all coaching points that we will place in the book for these particular exercises. And more than willing to take a look at that. What is this movement? So this is how we coach with uh, exercise concepts with good ankle rockers. Essentially, here's an example of an exercise. Boom. Notice, oh, I'm sorry, I pushed the wrong button again. I will pause it. No, notice, athlete, This we call this a power uh, step up. Essentially, athlete is pushing vertically straight down. We do not pull the athlete forward when they do a step up. So if, you're, if you're, your shin's vertical and your butt's back here and you pull yourself forward, this never happens in sport. We've shown you all these pictures and it doesn't happen in sports.